Hi, welcome to this episode of Millennial Pocket. Today we're going to be looking at the history of YouTube. YouTube is a free video sharing website that makes it easy to watch online videos. You can even create and upload your own videos to share with others. Over 2 billion logged in users visit YouTube each month, and every day people watch over a billion hours of video and generate billions of views. 79% of internet users have their own YouTube account. But how did it become the second most visited website in the US and most popular search engine in the world? Let's take a look. In 2005, three PayPal employees, Chad Hurley, Steve Chen and Javed Karim, decided to work on their project. Their original concept was a dating website called TuneIn Hookup, which allowed users to post videos of themselves for others to view and decide whether or not to hook up with them. Unfortunately, it wasn't a successful project and the concept failed. One day, the group discussed how hard it was to find a video online of Janet Jackson's infamous wardrobe malfunction during the 2004 Super Bowl halftime show, and on February 14, 2005, the name of TuneIn Hookup was changed to YouTube. The first ever YouTube video was uploaded on April 23, 2005. YouTube co-founder Javed Karim posted the 18-second video titled Me at the Zoo, which now has more than 150 million views. At that time, you could rate a video up to 5 stars, but in 2009, YouTube got rid of its 5-star system, because everyone rated either 1 or 5 stars. In September 2005, a Nike ad featuring Brazilian soccer star Ronaldinho became the first video to ever reach 1 million views on YouTube. The video was nearly 3 minutes long and was uploaded just 4 months after YouTube was founded. That video led to the concept of a viral video. Sequoia partner Rulof Bota worked at PayPal with the co-founders and learned about YouTube after using it to upload old wedding and honeymoon videos. In October 2005, Sequoia, which is still amongst the most successful venture firms in Silicon Valley, made an initial investment of $3.5 million in YouTube, and five months later, put an additional $8 million into the site. By the end of 2005, YouTube had 65,000 videos uploaded per day and was getting 8 million views a day. In February 2006, NBC ordered YouTube to remove a clip from Saturday Night Live called Lazy Sunday, which had become wildly popular on the site. The controversy, however, provided a huge marketing boost. YouTube promptly removed the clip and in June, just five months later, YouTube and NBC made a deal to help the traditional media company enter the new digital age. This marked the beginning of YouTube's several key partnerships with content providers later down the road. In October 2006, Google agreed to buy YouTube for $1.65 billion. Under the terms of the deal, YouTube kept a separate brand, its headquarters in San Bruno, and all YouTube employees remained with the company. In June 2007, YouTube launched its mobile app. The new service added an easy way to browse, rate and comment on YouTube content from a phone or mobile device. The company realized that it was time to start to monetize the platform. In August 2007, Google rolled out its first ads on YouTube videos. The company chose a new in-video format, featuring semi-transparent banners that pop up on the lower portion of videos that could be clicked away after several seconds. In December of the same year, YouTube began its partner program, allowing content creators to earn money from their content based on ad revenue. It gave YouTubers the opportunity to turn their hobby into a career. Not even a year later, the most successful creators were earning six-figure incomes. 2008 was the year when the company launched HD videos and expanded the viewable width of all videos appearing on the site. In April 2009, YouTube and Vivendi's Universal Music Group teamed up to launch a new music video website called Vivo, 
in response to music companies' complaints about piracy and unfair licensing terms. In 2010, YouTube took a big step into a territory dominated by television networks with the launch of live streaming functionality, YouTube Live. The company had experimented with live streaming before, hosting for example a live interview with Barack Obama, US President at that time, and broadcasting live coverage of a U2 concert. 2012 was the year of another record, the music video for Gangnam Style, a song by the Korean rapper Psy, became the first YouTube video to reach 1 billion views. The video broke YouTube's view count tracker and is still one of the most viewed videos on all of the platform. In February 2015, Google announced a family-friendly version of the video platform called YouTube Kids. YouTube Kids was the first Google product built from the ground up with the kids in mind. The goal was to make it safer and easier for children to find videos on topics they wanted to explore. In October of the same year, YouTube unveiled YouTube Red, its subscription service that allowed customers to watch videos, stream music without ads, and access exclusive content featuring major YouTubers. Three years later, YouTube Red was renamed YouTube Premium and spun off its music streaming to a separate service called YouTube Music. In 2016, another record was set. The music video of Adele, Hello, became the fastest video on YouTube to hit 1 billion views. It took her just 88 days to reach the record and beat the previous one held by Gangnam Style. The next year, 2017, YouTube officially launched its streaming bundle, YouTube TV, starting to compete more aggressively with streaming companies like Netflix and Hulu. In May 2019, T-Series became the first YouTube channel to hit 100 million subscribers. It beat out PewDiePie, the second most popular channel for the achievement. The race to the top started around September 2018 and ran for more than six months on YouTube. It became one of the most talked about cultural events on the platform, with dozens of channels running constant live stream trackers of each channel's subscriber growth and loss. YouTube has currently more than 2,000 plus employees and its revenue came to $15.1 billion for the full year 2019, up 36% from 2018, 9% of parent company Alphabet's total ad revenue. The number of channels earning six figures per year on YouTube grows by 40% every year. The highest earner on the platform in 2019 was Ryan Kaji, that owns the channel Ryan's World raking in $26 million. YouTube has definitely changed how we work, play and consume content. It is an extremely useful tool for artists. It's a completely free way for them to share their material with a large audience and be discovered. The platform also provides accessible education with an abundance of how-to videos, tutorials and lectures. If you have a question, all you have to do is search the term and you'll probably find lots of videos on the subject. What are your thoughts on YouTube? What do you think is going to be the next move for the company? Are they going to keep leading the video sharing industry? Please let me know in the comments section below. Leave a like if you got some value from this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Feel free to follow us on Instagram. We post every day there. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time.